Okay, in this uh, screencast I'd like to go through the normal distribution. We've had a look at the binomial distribution, which is a uh, discrete distribution. That is, it's the, the outcomes are countable. The random variable x is um, uh, take on countable values. With the normal distribution, we're now looking at a, a continuous distribution. A continuous distribution meaning that we the the um, the random variable can now take on values that are not countable, that are between one and two, or that are between one and one point one, between one and one point oh one. So it's a continuous distribution. That's the first thing to note. Um, it's uh, when it's graphed, it's a bell curve. It's a bell curve because it takes on an enormous population size sort of distribution. So. We've got this sort of shape to it. I haven't quite got that right, have I? So I'll have another crack at that. It's got this sort of shape to it. And uh, there's, we typically just have a horizontal axis. And um, what we have as a feature here is a value mu, which represents the mean. So that's the mean of the distribution. But the mean and the median and the mode, uh, in this case, the, any average, that represents the averages. So it's the mean, but the median and the mode are the same. Um, and what we have is, a, yes, we've got a bell curve. The curve is symmetrical about that mean. So that's another point here to make. Uh, the bell curve, the curve, the bell curve is symmetrical about mu. Symmetrical about mu. Um, hopefully you're you're okay with this mu business. Uh, it's just a Greek letter. Um, and also the um, the area under the curve, under the bell curve, area under the bell curve is equal to one. Equal to one right so this whole area is one now what we can do then is we can say right well that, that therefore the if I've got some values here then I can establish what my um, what my what my area is say between two values or above another value then I can work out the probability that values can take on those um, those amounts because the whole area is one and if I know what this area is then away I go and I've got the probability so there's some some um, some basic sort of uh, 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 tenets of this 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 principle um, and and important for you to get down and understand now um, all right importantly we've got another measure here and it's standard deviation how far away from the mean so if we're going to go one standard deviation Let's go one standard deviation to the right here of the mean. Uh, it's about there. Two standard deviations is about there. Three standard deviations is about there. So if I go, this value here is mu plus one standard deviation. This is mu plus two standard deviations. Standard deviation being sigma. Here we've got mu plus three standard deviations. Okay, and same on the other side of the, the mean, we've got one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations. That should be symmetrical, hopefully it is, um, to the eye. Two standard deviations and now mu minus three standard deviations. Okay, uh, we're bumping into each other a little bit here, but you get the idea. Now, what is important, and actually what all the calculations are based on, are that in a, in a, in a normal distribution of scores, so, i.e. large large quantity of data. And, and by the way, um, this is the sort of thing, if we're looking at, the, the, let's say, the heights of all adults in a, in a country, then this is how, if, you know, if we graphed 100,000 adults, this is what this, you know, if you, and this is the, this is, these are our heights along here and along the vertical would be the frequencies, then most of the frequencies would be around the mean, wouldn't they? And then, and then there'd be, you know, they'd, they'd tail off and there'd be a tiny amount of you know um, of, of 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 very very tall people here and a tiny amount of very very small people here, but this is how this is how a normal distribution means. So in in a way, the normal distribution it's as it's it's self defining, isn't it? It's it's a it's a it's it's a distribution of normality um, and uh, in 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 a population. So you can think of lots of examples that would would spread this way. 
Okay, um, if we're going to go, if we're going to look at the number of scores that say sit but in in that in that range there, one deviate, one standard deviation, either side of the mean, then there would be 68.3 percent. I think is the number. I'm just checking my notes here. Yes, it is 68.3 percent. So we've got 68.3 percent of scores in here. In that in that range there, from from um, one standard deviation above to one standard deviation below. If we're going to look at two standard deviations either side, then now we're looking at 95.5% of scores sitting in that range. Okay, so for example, if my mean was 60 and my standard deviation was 10, and then I'd have between 50 and 70, I'd have this many scores. But if it was 60 and 10, which is actually, by the way, a very standard type of uh, evenly spread uh, bell curve, um, and and actually what a lot of um, uh, populations, uh, well, so out of 100, if it's standardised to out of 100, if it's indexed to 100, then that's where it goes. And I'm talking about uh, test scores and that sort of thing. Um, so if we were 60 and 10, then two standard deviations would be 80 to 40. So 80 and, between 80 and 40 would have this many scores. And then three standard deviations. So now we're getting right. We're going to collect most of our scores. Now that's for a 60-10, that's 90 to 30. That's going to collect 99.7% of scores are going to sit in that range of values there. So our, our normal curve is built on these sorts of stats. And any calculation that we go through in a moment we start to evaluate things are based on on these percentages and and uh, how much of the the curve is taken up by um, these sort of spreads these sort of range of scores here so once we pump in a standard deviation and a mean then the calculator will work out what sort of area it's taking up under the curve and therefore gives a probability of that score likely to happen so let's have a look at some examples of some calculations that we're likely to, to, to be encountered with, encountering. So, oh, that's terrible. My bell curves need some work. So there's, there's a bell curve. I'm going to stick an axis down there. Now I'm going to give, let's say, um, let's say our mean here is equal to 30. I'll give you a standard deviation of 6. Okay, so that's our that's our information. Now I want to know what the probability is of a score in this distribution here being greater than, let's say, 40. So what's the probability of x being greater than 40 given this information here? So what that, if we have a little look at this, one standard deviation would be 36, wouldn't it? So if we go on one standard deviation, we'd end up here at 36. I want to know where we are here at 40. What's the probability that a score lies above 40 in this range here. So what is basically, what's that area there? Um, and we can calculate this. We can go into, <clears throat> excuse me, we go back to our old friend menu 5, 5. And let's see where we are after menu 5, 5. Menu, here we go, 5, 5. We're in distributions. Now we're in normal PDF, normal CDF. We're going to get a normal CDF too. And we see there we've got a lower bound an upper bound window, a mean, and a standard deviation window. Now, what's our lower bound here? I want to know what uh, what the probability of being above 40 is. So 40 is my lower bound. All right, so I'll put 40 in there. Now, my upper bound's interesting, isn't it? Because I don't have one. It's it's infinity. It's forever. So uh, this seems fairly primitive, but I'm just going to pump in a big old number here. All right, there we go. Um, it's going to be fine. It'll work. Now my mean is 30 and my standard deviation is 6. So I'm going to put in 30 here and I'm going to put in 6 here. And I'm going to hit OK. Now it's going to give me 0 0.04779. 0 0.04779. So that's telling me that that's the area of that section here under the curve. It's pretty small, isn't it? It's like 4 or 5%. So the probability of a score being above 40, 40 or more, or um, yeah, 40 or more, is 
given these, this, this data here. Now it would be even less if I reduce this value here, the standard deviation, made it even tighter. Let's say reduce it back to um, reduce it back to three, then it will be a, even less likely to occur. So if I go back in here and I select that that data, that that calculation, there I'm going to get there if it kills me. There we go. Get back up there. Hit enter. Now I'm just going to change that value of six. My uh, standard deviation is going to become three. So it's a much tighter group of scores. Now, what's the result likely to be? As I hit enter, much less likely. Now, look at that, 0.00429. That's because now what I said was now most of my scores are sitting in here at 33. That's now, and 36 is two standard deviations out. 39 is three standard deviations out. So 40 is really outlying stuff. So that's how we go and calculate that sort of thing. We can find out ranges of values. Uh, low and high, we can find out greater than, less than, pretty straightforward um, to do that. Okay, going to look at one more thing um, in this screencast, and that is what happens if we got information that's the other way around. So let's say now we've got this bell curve, um, and uh, there's my horizontal axis. Of course, I've got my, my mean here. Um, now, what happens if I say, right, now my mean is, let's say we've got some, you know, just this arbitrary figure, um, I've got a standard deviation of uh, 8, and I'm interested, actually, in what, uh, above what score lies 10% of the scores. So, above what score, so I want to know what that score is there, such that my area here is equal to 10%, 0.1. So what I'm doing here is this is re this is reverse information. What I got previously was I'd put in uh, this information here. I'd 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 put in what the uh, what this number here was, and my upper bound, and then I, it would give me the area. Now it's giving me the area and saying, well, um, uh, but I want to know what this bound here is. So this is let's go back in here to menu five five, but now. We're going to go to three, which is inverse normal. It's saying, give me the other inf right. So area, see, it's asking for the area. Now my area is 0.1, but when it asks for area on inverse normal, it wants the area to the left of the boundary. So if I, whatever I put in, um, it's going to give me the it's going to give me the boundary that uh, for the area. The, it's going to give me the area that's left of. So what what I need to put in is not 0.1, but 0.9. Okay, if I put 0.1 in there, I'd be down this end of the scale. I'd be over the other other side of the of the uh, bell curve. So I'm going to put 0.9 in there. I'm going to put in my my uh, my mean, which is 40, and I'm going to put in my standard deviation, which is 8, and it's going to tell me 50.3. So this value here, this value here is equal to 50.3. Three. Does that make sense? 40 and 8. So it's just above one standard deviation. Yeah, that sounds about right, doesn't it? So that value there. So with this information, mean 40, standard deviation 8, 10% uh, of scores lie above 50.3. I got that through inverse normal. Inverse normal, which is menu 5, 5, and then it was 3, wasn't it? To get to inverse normal. And the note that we need to make is that area equals left area. Left area, as in as in this. So what is what the area I put in has to be that area there, not the area to the right, but area to the left. Maybe maybe that's better wording. Area to the left. Area to the left. Okay, so that's how to manoeuvre around. I've already used up 14 and a half minutes of your precious time, so I'm going to stop there. Um, there will be another screencast on, on, uh, on, on how to use the standard normal distribution, um, but I'll post that very shortly. Okay, cheers.